Hey everyone, welcome back to Anxiety Art Adventures. Today I'm going to show you a kind of a stash video. I've had a lot of requests for people to show um, what I have as far as diamond paintings go. So I'm going to show you, um, it's going to be short, but it, you'll get an idea of what I have. And it's not all of it. Um, I have a lot of things hanging up and I just, I didn't want to go through every single thing I have hanging. That's going to be a separate video as far as finished um, diamond paintings that I have hanging up uh, versus um, the unfinished ones that I have hanging up. So um, I'm going to show you a quick stash um, so you can see what I have. Um, I really didn't want to do this at first because it kind of shows how much of a problem I have with buying diamond paintings, especially from Diamond Art Club. Um, as all of you know that have followed me for a while, uh, Diamond Art Club is my favorite place to buy diamond paintings from due to the quality of the kits, the drills, um, and they're just, they're a fabulous company to work with. So um, the majority of it is Diamond Art Club. So enjoy this. And then when I'm done with the stash uh, video, I'm going to come back here and we're going to do um, a whip and chat with an article that I found. So uh, enjoy. I'll see you back here in a little bit. Okay, we're back. All right, so this is everything um, that's in a box, okay? So everything over here on the left is what I have not done an unboxing of. So at first we've got Craftably, this is called the Big Blue, and it is a 80 by 80 round drill with sea turtles. It's awesome, but it's very large. So this is gonna stay in the box for right now. Then with Diamond Art Club, we have uh, Dream, which is the tiger with the uh, goldfish around it. This is a square drill. Yeah, probably will never get done. Um, Betsy Lynn, this is a square as well. Um, probably will never get done. Uh, <laughs> this is my newest one that I've gotten, the uh, Flight of the Fireflies by Randall Spangler. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing this one y'all can see that. Got the little dragons. I've got Sasha and Jet. I haven't opened that one yet. And these are all ones I'm going to do unboxings for you um, eventually. Uh, this is a drive out. The Serafina. I'm really, really excited about this one. This one's really cool. Uh, this one is Catching Dreams. And um, it's a Chuck Penson. I was going to do this one as a um, gift for my dad and stepmother for their, um, they have a river house. Alice in Wonderland. I'm looking forward to working on this one. Uh, this one is Remember Me. Uh, this was a limited edition, I think. Uh, tell me. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but I'm pretty sure this was a limited edition. Then I did go ahead and get the Ice Princess by Hannah Lynn. Uh, this is the first edition. And I got the one where you can see her whole dress. Okay, and then we've got a Blue Owl. Really pretty. I got a Swansea Sunset. Uh, coffee is always a good idea. These are all round. I got white roses and butterflies. And then this one is a pink rose. This one is special to me and I'll explain that in the unboxing when I do it, but that's round as well. Okay, now over here, I'm trying not to make you guys sick. That tub down there, this is all things that I've shown you that are empty boxes. These are ones that I've shown you, but I've kept in boxes. This is an extra craftably astral guardian. I'm gonna use this as a giveaway once I hit my, um, 3,000 subscribers. That's still in the box, ready to go and ship. Uh, this one is where light meets dark. Um, I did an unboxing of this. All of these I did unboxings for, but these are the ones I put back in the boxes for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, this is Sneaky Cat, huge, 107 by 52, square. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Siamese Tees. This is 55 by 102, round. Darth Daddy, 
also fairly large, 50 by 89. Uh, Mermaid Twins. Uh, it actually was called um, Gemini at one point, and I am Gemini, so I wanted to get this one. Uh, this is a 74 by 55 round, and I did show this one on a video. Uh, this one is I Miss You. Yes, round. Floral Delight. This one is just gorgeous. I can't wait to do this one. Uh, this is a Kotar. This is the Sun and Sea. I think that's what it's called. I don't remember. And then, of course, the Diamond Dots, the Lulu Llama. Okay, so then try not to make you guys sick. We're going to go over here. These are the ones that I'm actively working on. We've got Stand By Me, which is Star Ore. Um, I've gotten, you know, through here, I've got parchment paper on it. The Tiger, uh, which is Square from Diamond Art Club. And I've gotten up to about here. I'm trying to hold the phone and not make you guys sick. And then I've got the dreaded Pier one that I'm working on for Adam uh, for his office. I haven't gotten very far. I think I've only gotten, hold on. Yep. I've only gotten down here. I've gotten across on the on the dock a little bit. Um, I just I really struggle with square diamond paintings. All right, so these are three that I'm working on. I have these three in this spare bedroom, and then we're gonna walk over here. Okay, so in my closet. Um, ouch! That really hurt. <laughs> uh, in my closet, I hang up finished ones as well as. Um, canvases I haven't started yet if I take them out of the box. So here I've got, and I'm going to do another video of all my finishes, but these are ones that I have finished. And then starting here, and I can hang, you know, four or five, six at a time on these hangers. These hangers are fabulous. I'll link them down below. But yeah, this one's got like there are four on it. Uh, this one's got two, three. There's the dragon. The only problem with hanging them up like this is if you see the corners, they curl. But with Diamond Art Club kits, because the canvas is such high quality, they lay out flat once you lay them down. So I'm not, not worried about that. So I have a lot of them hanging up in this closet. Yeah. And then I've got my finished ones there. So yeah, that is, <laughs> that is my stash as of right now. Um, I do have a couple coming from China that I've been waiting for for a while. Cause you know, with everything going on, it's fine. I don't mind. Uh, but anyway, so I wanted to show you guys a stash video. So I'm going to stop this video and we're going to go back and we're going to do um, a little bit of a whip and chat with an article. So there you have it. That's all of my diamond paintings. See you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. How did you like my stash video? <laughs> and that's not, that's not all of it. I mean, I have so many things hanging up in, um, in, um, my closet and I have some in drawers and all of that, but that gave you an idea of what I have. So anyway, so I am still working on Worlds Away by Mandy Manzano. This is for um, our Mandy DP along, uh, which is hashtag Mandy DP 2020. So if you're working on a Mandy Manzano, please feel free to um, go ahead and uh, tag your work on Instagram and also in my Facebook group, uh, Shalene with the coloring book nook, uh, her Facebook group, as well as Lisa Bradley's Facebook group. And yeah, so, uh, I am going to read you an article from Buzzfeed that I found that was actually pretty cool. Um, it's 35 things you didn't know are called something totally different than what we call it now. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So anyway, so I'm going to sit here and do this. Um, I'm using a newer pen from Jim's Handmade Pen Shop. I know you guys can't really see that, but it's real pretty aqua and purple and 
like a ivory. It's got a real pretty shimmer to it. Uh, yeah, so, okay, 35 things that you didn't know or called something totally different than what we call it now. Number one, Chick-fil-A was originally named Dwarf Grill and then later Dwarf House. And there's a picture. I don't know if that's going to show up. Probably not, but it shows Dwarf up here. That's what it was originally called. That's interesting. I didn't know that they had a completely separate name. Did any of you know that? That it was called the uh, Dwarf Grill, and then the Dwarf House, and then Chick-fil-A. I did not know that. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, interesting fact, just something I'll let you guys know. Um, my dad actually has property in the city of Richmond <clears throat> that he leased out to Chick-fil-A. So um, it's like a 10-year lease agreement with Chick-fil-A. Um, but the funny thing is, is he got a unlimited get free Chick-fil-A card. Um, he never uses it. <clears throat> Excuse me. The pollen here is just horrible. My allergies are going crazy. Uh, he never uses it, but I just thought it was interesting that they gave him like this free laminated Chick-fil-A card. Um, anyway. Okay. Number two. The Peach Crayola Crayon was originally named Flesh. I do think I remember that. Um, I think. Do y'all remember that? I'm pretty sure I remember having a set of Crayola Crayons that were, that were the peach color was called Flesh. I wonder why they changed it. It doesn't say why they changed it, but um, yeah. Uh, number three, Cookie Monster's real name is Sydney. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Or maybe I did know that. I don't know. It's been so long since I've watched Sesame Street. Who knows? Um, Snapchat was originally named Pictaboo. P-I-C-T-A-B-O-O. -O. And it has a cute little ghost image down here. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Didn't know that. I don't use Snapchat, so. Uh, do any of you use Snapchat? I've just, I've never really been into that, I guess. I don't know. I think it's for a younger generation. I could be wrong, but yeah. Okay. Uh, Fred Durst originally considered calling Limp Biscuit Blood Fart. Glad he went with Limp Biscuit, right? <laughs> Blood fart. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> uh, the number six, the Powerpuff Girls were originally called the Whoop Ass Girls. Okay, well, first of all, who who are the Pow Powerpuff Girls? Do am I missing something here? I honestly don't know. What? What, what is that? The Powerpuff Girls? What? Do, do y'all know what? The Powerpuff Girls? What is that? Anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> SpongeBob was originally called Sponge Boy. Okay. Sponge Boy. Didn't know that either. Um, I haven't watched a whole lot of Spongebob. Um, it's not really my jam, but I know a lot of you with children probably have, but I did not know that. Spongebob was originally called Sponge Boy. Um, oh, okay, here we go. They said they couldn't use that name because Spun Spongy Boy was copyrighted by a mop company. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Clifford, the big red dog, his name was originally Tiny. Wow. Uh, oh, I didn't know this. Number nine, Meryl Streep's real name is Mary Streep. So, I wonder why she changed it. It doesn't say why she changed it, but... Oh, she's so beautiful. Look at that picture of her. Oh, 
She is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Love her. Okay, let me put this down here. What's everybody working on today? I didn't ask. I'm sorry. Gosh, I'm, I'm horrible. Horrible person. It's so cold here today. I think it's just making my brain cells die at a faster rate. Um, we actually got snow this morning. Uh, just for like an hour. No big deal. And it turned back to rain. But I think today's only supposed to be a high of like 45. Uh, yeah, so what's everybody working on? Are you diamond painting? Coloring? Crocheting? Yeah. Let me know. In the comments below. Y'all don't mind me. I'm just... I'm whack. I am whack. Alright, number 10. Billy... Elish full name is Billy Elish Pirate Bard O'Connell. Okay, I don't know who that is. Uh, okay, maybe I should know who that is, but I don't know who that is. Uh, number eleven, the Spice Girls were originally named Touch. There was also another member named Michelle Stevenson. Apparently, she was a former band member. I didn't know that. Hmm. I love reading articles like this. They're so interesting because you learn things you didn't know. Uh, 12. The show New Girl was originally called <laughs> Chicks and Dicks. I love that show. That that was such a great show. Such a great show. Um, has anybody watched that show? Like, to the end? Has anybody watched that show? Love it. Love it. Yes. Okay, number 13. Likewise, the show Friends was originally called Six of One. Didn't know that. Uh, the iMac was originally supposed to be named Mac Man. M-A-C-M-A-N. Hmm. Uh, I'm kind of glad they didn't go with that, right? Mac Man. That makes me think of Pac-Man. Yeah, that's a good question. So what kind of phone does everybody have? Do you have an, an Apple or an Android? Let me know. I am an Apple girl. Um, I, I don't really know why. I used to have Android and I swapped over to Apple um, probably about seven or eight years ago. And everything I have now uh, oh, well, I'm sorry, not everything, but a lot of what I have now is Apple. So like my iPad, I have an Apple Watch, uh, my iPhone, um, you know, so it's like all tied together. So even if I wanted to go to Android, it would be a painful move because I would have to replace some things, which don't want to do, don't want to do. Okay, number 15. Sour Patch Kids were originally called Mars Men. Look at this picture. Isn't that funny? <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, the drink Bloody Mary was originally called Bucket of Blood. That is not a good term, and I'm glad they didn't call it that because that makes me think of horrible, horrible things bucket of blood how would you like to order a drink called that yikes yikes I mean Bloody Mary isn't a whole lot better but at least it's a little bit more tame than bucket of blood uh, number 17 7-eleven stores were originally named totem stores uh, the name was changed to 7-eleven after the company changed their hours to 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. I did not know that either. Hmm. But that's not entirely true because we have some 7-Eleven stores here that are open 24 hours. So I guess maybe that was originally what their hours were, I guess. Uh, number 18, the band The Cranberries were originally named The Cranberry Saw Us. Okay. I love that band, the Cranberries. So sad that that um, lead singer passed away. 
Uh, number 19, Nickelback's original name was Village Idiot. Wow. Okay. Why would, why would you want to name your band that? Why would, why? Please tell me. Why would you want to bring that kind of character flaw to your band name? Village Idiot. Really? Okay. Well, I'm glad that they stuck with Nickelback. I'm not really a fan of Nickelback, but... Uh, number 20, the Goo Goo Dolls' original name was the Sex Maggots. Yikes. Okay. Moving on. Uh, number 21, Creed's original name was Naked Toddler. These are getting a little weird. I flipped through some of these, but um, didn't read it fully. Number 22, Donuts were originally called Oily Coex or Oily Cake. Oily cakes. Gross. Um, a ship captain's mother from New England named Elizabeth Gregory put walnuts or hazelnuts in the center of hers, and voila, they became donuts. Okay. Did any of you know that? <laughs> I did not know that. See, these are the things that I stay up at night and, and read about. It's like, I find these crazy, silly articles. Some of them interesting, some of them really not so interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, 23, Q-tips were originally called baby gays. Um, and there's a, a image here. It says, something new. Every mother will be glad to know about Q-tips baby gaze, sanitary boric tipped swabs for the eyes, nostrils, ears, gums, and many other uses. 60 swabs in a box for 25 cents, you guys. 25 cents. Oh my gosh. They added a Q, which stood for quality. That is hilarious. I'm glad they changed that name because that is not PC. Uh, 24, Julianne Moore was born Julie Ann Smith. Didn't know that. Love Julianne Moore, though. Wow, okay. Do any of you know what Google was originally called before I read this? This, I, I had no idea about this. This is very interesting. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> Google was originally called Backrub. Look, look at this image. Backrub. What? What? Is this real or is this a joke? Uh, 26. Mickey Mouse was originally called Mortimer. Mortimer. Oh, don't mind my computer. Just needs air, apparently. I didn't know that. Mickey Mouse was named Mortimer. Hmm. Uh, Walt Disney's wife hated the name, so he changed it. <laughs> oh, happy wife is a happy life. We all know that, right? Okay, softball was originally called kitten ball. Okay. Not sure why, but that's okay. Oh, here we go. It was called Kitten Ball <clears throat> because the founder of the softball's first name was named The Kittens. Uh, number 28, Yahoo was originally called Jerry's Guide to the World Wide Web. Wow. I didn't know that. And y'all, I'm old, so I should know that, right? <laughs> I did not know that. I'm going to have to ask Adam if he knew that. Some of these. Uh, 29. Cotton candy was invented by a dentist and originally called fairy floss. Fairy floss. Yum. What? What, what does that mean? Fairy floss. Do fairies dissolve? Because cotton candy dissolves in your mouth, right? Ugh. Okay. Number 30. The movie Scream was originally called Scary Movie. I did know that. 
I did know that. Yes. That was actually a good movie. Uh, number 31, Buzz Lightyear was originally named Lunar Larry. I did not know that. Number 32, an apron was originally called a napron. The name was changed because people were always mispronouncing napron and calling it an apron anyway. Huh. Didn't know that. Did anybody know that? Napron. Huh. See, the more you know, this has been your public service announcement. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> oh boy. Okay. 33. Cheerios were originally called Cherry Oats. Cherry Oats. Check out this picture. I've never seen a box like that. Have you ever seen a box like that? I mean, not even like a long time ago. Okay. Let me know if anybody ate a box of Cherry Oats. Number 34, Eggo Waffles were originally called Froffles. F-R-O-F-F-L-E-S. Froffles. A combination of frozen and waffles. Froffles. I'm going to say that to Adam. Be like, hey, can we have some Froffles? <laughs> uh, he's going to be like, what in the heck are you talking about, girl? What? Froffles. Oh, that'd be good for Mrs. Coffee because her husband loves waffles. There you go. Froffles. Okay. Hannah Montana was originally named Alexis, Texas. Yikes. Okay. So those are the 35 things that um, you didn't know or called something totally different than what we call it now. All right. Now the other article I have are, I have two actually. Okay, 17 foods you've probably been eating wrong for years. Okay, are y'all ready? Some of these are disgusting to me. Like, I, I would never ever do this. But maybe some of you have done these. I don't know, but we're going to find out. Uh, number one, the next time you eat Doritos, make sure you top each one with a little bit of cream cheese. I mean, that just looks nasty. And it says, just trust me on this one. It's so freaking good. I don't like cream cheese. So, um, that's big no in my book. Let me know if anybody's eaten Doritos with cream cheese. Okay. Number two, the best way to improve your standard grilled cheese sandwich is by adding pickle slices for extra crunch and flavor. That obviously isn't unusual. I love pickles and I'm sure a lot of you enjoy pickles on sandwiches. Um, and I have put them on grilled cheese before. So, yeah, they're talking about the little round um, pickle slices. So you just put that in your grilled cheese when you throw it in the pan. Um, it says a lot of families add tomato slices to their grilled cheeses, but dill pickle slices taste the best. Okay, now this one was interesting. Uh, how many of you are fans of Twinkies? Yeah, I am. Um, well, I was back when I was younger. Uh, if you freeze your Twinkies ahead of time, they basically turn into mini ice cream sandwiches. Doesn't that sound amazing? Yes. Yes, please. Okay, number four. And I know a lot of people have done this, and this goes with the whole Australian thing, but uh, bite off each end of a Twix. So you can use it like a straw in your milk, hot chocolate, or tea. Um, you can also use coffee. Uh, it says also, Australians, this hack works great with Tim Tams. I love Tim Tams. Um, they are hard to find here. Uh, I've bought them on Amazon before. And they actually, I mean, they came undamaged and really good. Love Tim Tams. Great Australian treat right there. Uh, number five, freeze your gummy bears and fresh grapes to help intensify the sugary taste. Just suck on them until they're soft enough to chew. Well, see, now I disagree with this. 
I, I think that that adds an extra step to me eating candy. Like if I want a gummy bear, I don't want it to be cold and frozen and I don't want to have to suck on it. I just want to be able to chew it, you know? Um, it's just my opinion. Uh, let's see, number six. And I'm gonna have to try this one because I don't buy this one. If you eat your burger upside down, none of the ingredients will fall out when you bite into it. The only thing I can come up with on this one is the fact that the top, like here, I'll show you the picture. Like the top bun of the burger is more rounded than the bottom part of the burger. So that is keeping it, keeping everything in. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that. Why, why do you think if you flip a burger upside down, none of the ingredients will fall out? I'll have to try it. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, I don't, yeah, I don't have any um, hamburger meat now that I think about it. Meat is really hard to come by these days. Uh, number seven, instead of putting salt and pepper on your french fries, season the ketchup instead. So put the salt and pepper in your ketchup, you know, and mix it up and then put your french fries in, in the seasoned ketchup. It's actually a good idea. Okay, this is just freaking weird. Uh, number eight, flaming hot Cheetos are the perfect ice cream topping because they add both texture and taste to an otherwise bland scoop. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but if I want ice cream, I want something sweet. I don't want to add a, a Cheeto and a flaming hot Cheeto to boot. I don't want to add that to my ice cream. No, no sugar. <clears throat> okay, number nine. Um, everybody's done this. Turn your cupcake into a sandwich by tearing the bottom off and putting it on top of the frosting. It's way less messy, and it also guarantees the perfect bite every time. I'm weird. I don't like eating food with my hands, so I actually eat um, cupcakes, burgers, um, french fries, anything that you usually use with your hand. I use a fork, knife and fork. Because I've, I'm just, I'm weird. I do not like getting my hands dirty. My mom said I've been like that since I was little. Uh, even though I was a tomboy, which is strange, I just, I didn't like getting my hands dirty. Yeah. Okay, number 10. Add Doritos to your cooked quesadilla to provide an extra crunch and some extra cheesiness. Okay, so like when you make your quesadilla, See if you can see this. When you make your quesadilla, you just, on the round tortilla, you just add some Doritos and then you cook it up. That's interesting. Might have to try that. Okay, now this, I might try it. I don't know. Um, uh, we'll see. Uh, let's see. Try adding a little soy sauce to your popcorn for extra flavor. Well, I'm assuming that would substitute any kind of salt. Um, and I don't know if you'd want to put butter with soy sauce. I don't know. I mean, it might be good. It might be something to try. Um, they have an image of uh, less sodium Kikaman soy sauce. Uh, number 12. Freeze green grapes and then blend them up with Sprite or 7-Up to make your own DIY carbonated slushy. That actually sounds really good. So just frozen grapes and like Sprite and 7-Up. Ooh, might have to try that if I can find some grapes. Um, yeah, moot, moot, what is wrong with me? <laughs> Meat, fruit, and like fresh produce um, is very difficult to get where I am anyway right now. Um, it's kind of like hit or miss. Okay. Number 13, try adding chili powder to your fruit, especially pineapples, for a sweet and spicy combination. That actually sounds pretty good. Uh, I love pineapple, so uh, yeah, might have to try that chili powder, huh? I 
wonder how that would taste on like melon. Um, I love putting salt on melon, just a little bit on cantaloupe. Um, I don't like honeydew, so um, mainly just cantaloupe or watermelon. Yeah, that's really good if y'all haven't tried that. Uh, number 14, for an upgrade to the classic peanut butter and jelly sandwich, add Doritos for some extra flavor and crunch. I've added potato chips before. I don't think I've ever added Doritos to a peanut butter and jelly. I don't know if I would. I don't know. Would, would y'all do that? I love peanut butter and honey. I do that quite a bit. Uh, especially peanut butter, honey, and banana. Oh, yes. Yes, Shook. Okay, number 15. This is weird, too. Add honey to any slice of pizza to make your taste buds happier. This works especially well if there's meat on the pizza. I, what? No. Have any of y'all done that? I, no. When you want meat on your pizza, you want it to be like, you know, you don't want it to be sweet, do you? I like it to be like cheesy and salty and garlicky. I think the honey would ruin that. I don't know, could be wrong. Okay, this one's weird too. I've never done this one. Let me know if anybody's done this one. This one really intrigues me. Uh, number 16, peanut butter and cheese sandwiches are 500 times better than peanut butter and jellies. Grill them for a crunchy and melty snack. So basically, however you make a grilled cheese, add peanut butter to that and then put it in your pan and cook it. That's weird. That just looks disgusting. But part of me like wants to really try it <laughs> just to see. Um, I don't know. That That's really weird to me. Has anybody done that? Peanut butter and cheese? Blah. I've done cheese and mayonnaise sandwiches, not grilled, but uh, yeah. Uh, for tastier, number 17, for tastier mac and cheese, try topping it off with some sriracha. Your taste buds will thank you. Okay, that I have done. Okay, and then I have one more article, and then I'll probably call it. Um, this is, <clears throat> excuse me. 16 cooking tips that will make you say, why didn't I know about these sooner? Some of these are actually really interesting. Okay, number one, for the perfect ready to use recipe starters, freeze fresh herbs with some olive oil. Um, don't you hate it when you buy fresh herbs for a recipe, have some left over and slowly watch them wither and die in the fridge? No more. Take the leftover herbs and put them in ice cube trays with olive oil. Next time you need that seasoning, you have a delicious flavor nugget ready to go. This works with fresh herbs, minced garlic, grated ginger, etc. Okay, here's a picture. So they've got all of the herbs and olive oil in the ice cube trays. And then that's what it looks like when you take it out. And you can just throw that in, you know, a skillet. And cook with whatever. That's actually a really good idea. I've never ever thought of doing that. But fabulous idea. Okay, number two, to prevent melted chocolate from clumping or burning, uh, melt butter first, remove the pan from the heat, and then add the chocolate chips. The residual heat from the saucepan will melt the chocolate in the butter and you'll have a perfect creamy, non-burnt chocolate to use in your recipes. Uh, might try that. I usually use the um, like double broiler system uh, where you just, you know, stick, stick a pan in a pan of hot water and do it that way. Um, that usually works too. Okay, number three, spread butter under the skin of your turkey to make it super brown and crispy. Uh, I think everybody knows about that. Um, you also put it on the outside of the skin. Um, okay, number four, and this this seems a little disgusting to me, just a little bit, just a, a smidge. Crack an egg into your mashed potatoes when they're almost ready to make them extra creamy. 
Uh, forget about cream and butter. The secret to super creamy mashed potatoes is apparently adding an egg to the mix. After all, it works for pasta carbonara, so why not here? And if you're worried about adding a raw egg to your food, fear not. The heat of the mashed potatoes will cook it and make it safe to eat. Has anybody tried that? Crack an egg in your mashed potatoes when they're almost ready to make it extra creamy. See, I add milk. I I add milk to my mashed potatoes. Um, probably more so than what I should, but I that's what I do. I add milk. Okay, uh, number five. For a super juicy chicken breast, quickly brine them before you cook them. All you need is water, salt, and 15 minutes. Huh. Okay. It doesn't say how to do that. Uh, number six. Roll cookie dough between two sheets of plastic wrap before you chill it for easy cleanup. Um, after it's chilled, you can just cut out your shapes and, and bake them. It works great. There's no extra flour, so cookies don't get tough. And you don't have to roll a disc of super cold dough, which is basically impossible. Everybody's been there trying to unroll a, a frozen dough thing. Oh my gosh. That you have to let sit out and thaw. But if you let it thaw too much, then you have to worry about it breaking as you unroll it. It's such, such a delicate process um, for making pies or cookies if you're using, you know, store-bought like Pillsbury dough that's already rolled up. Okay. Number seven, for delicious vegan desserts, try using aquafaba, aka chickpea water, as a substitute for cream or eggs. Okay, well, I'm not vegan, but good to know. Um, make peeling butternut squash, this is number eight, make peeling butternut squash less of a headache by microwaving the squash for a few minutes first. Okay, I am a huge fan of butternut squash. My mom makes it with um, brown sugar, butter, and honey. And you, you cut them up, you know, you cut them open. Um, you, you scoop the insides and like stir the insides within the actual um, squash. And then you mix it with the brown sugar the butter and the honey, and then you bake it. It is divine, divine. One of the best things ever. Okay, number nine, take your dish to the next level by finishing it off with a touch of acid. Uh, what they mean by that is um, lemon, lemon juice. Um, acidity, saltiness, and sweetness are the holy trinity of food, and if you taste your cooking and find something not sure what is missing. I bet adding a little lemon lime or balsamic vinegar will make all the difference. Okay. Uh, this one's interesting. Might have to try this one. Number 10. Use ground coffee to enhance the flavor of chocolate cake. The bitterness of the coffee will add an amazing depth of flavor to your chocolate. Adding a teaspoon of espresso powder to your batter works well also. Wow. Okay. I love coffee, so coffee in my cake, that'd be good. Wouldn't that just be called a coffee cake? <laughs> no, coffee cake is just cake with like crumbly goodness on top. So good with a cup of coffee. Oh my gosh. See, now I want coffee cake. Y'all, this is bad. Sorry, Adam made um, banana bread, so I do have banana bread in the kitchen that I can eat. This is coming along gorgeous. I love this DP. Love it. Love it, love it. Make sure that you add, um, I think I told you that, make sure you add your Mandy Manzano diamond painting that you're working on uh, to the hashtag on um, Instagram. What I'm gonna do is at the end of our DP along, which is July the 1st, I'm going to take all of the images um, for people that have participated and I'm just going to make a video and show all of the different Mandy Manzano finishes for the DP along. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. 
Uh, number 11, use broth instead of water to add flavor to your dishes. I do that anyway. Um, I usually use chicken broth when it calls for water because it, it does add more flavor, um, like gravies, potatoes, rice, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, number 12, okay, this sounds gross, but the more I thought about it, it makes sense. Um, it says, add mayonnaise to your cake batters for a super moist cake. We swear it works. Um, when you think about it, mayo is just eggs and oil, so it makes sense that it would work wonders in a cake. I mean, yeah, it's just, are you going to taste the mayonnaise? I don't know. Oh, they have a recipe for cupcakes making making cupcakes using mayonnaise, so I might have to try that. Okay, number 13, for the perfect sear on your meat, pat it dry with paper towel before cooking. Uh, yeah, Adam does that. Adam is in charge of cooking uh, meat in our house, so he always does that. Um, we use a sous vide, which is you put your meat in a bag with seasoning or like a marinade, and then you put it in a pot of water and the sous vide heats up um, the water to a certain temperature and it cooks the meat evenly and it's so juicy, it's never dry. Um, so yeah, once he takes it out of the sous vide, it has to cook for like an hour. Um, once he takes it out of the sous vide, he pats it dry and then puts it in a skillet to sear uh, just to get, you know, just to get a uh, color to it. Uh, it's amazing, love it. But he always pats the, the meat dry before he puts it in the pan. So yeah, that's a good tip. Uh, does anybody else use a sous vide to cook meat with? Let me know. Um, I still haven't used my pressure cooker. I need to do that. Number 14, when baking a cheesecake, line the outside of your pan with tin foil for better heat distribution. Huh. This ensures that the water doesn't get in when you do a water bath and you get a more even heat distribution. I've never made a cheesecake. Um, looking at the pictures, this looks very complicated and probably not something that I would do. I like easy, easy baking, easy baking, right? Okay. Number 15. Freeze your ginger to make it easier to grate. This also prevents the ginger from going bad. Does anybody buy fresh ginger? I just buy powdered ginger. Like, you know, like in the seasoning aisle, just powdered ginger. Um, I use that when we make um, uh, cider. And I also use it in um, stir fry. It's really good. If you make stir fry, like in a skillet, just sprinkle a little bit of powdered ginger in with your stir fry and your sauce. It makes it so yum yum. So yum yum. Love it. Try it. I promise. It's good. Okay, number 16. This is the last one. And use mayonnaise instead of butter for your grilled cheese sandwiches. This will give you a super golden and crispy crust. So I have a picture. So you spread the mayonnaise on the outside of both pieces of bread and then you cook it in the pan instead of, you know, using butter on the outside of the bread. Huh. I did not know that. That's kind of interesting. Has anybody done that? Um, oh, find more cooking hacks using mayonnaise. Oh, all right, let's read these and then I'll, I'll call it. <laughs> Whether you love or hate mayonnaise, it can really come in handy. Okay, we already knew that one. Number one, add it to cake batter. Number two, brush your proteins with mayonnaise before cooking to prevent them from sticking to the grill. Oh, really? Let me know if anybody's heard of these hacks, you know? Um, that's interesting. I did not know that. Um, let's see. Yep, for a golden crust, number three, for golden crust, fry your grilled cheese and mayonnaise instead of butter. 
Um, number four, use it to make fluffy biscuits that only takes three ingredients to make. So you need self-rising flour, milk, and mayonnaise is all you need to make super fluffy biscuits that don't require any yeast or rising. And there's a link for the recipe for that. That's interesting. Hmm. Number five, add it to mashed potatoes to make them super creamy and rich. Ooh. Okay. Uh, they have a, a recipe where you can look to see how to make it with mayo. Uh, rub your chicken in it before roasting to give it a beautiful golden color. Uh, mayonnaise makes the perfect rub because it helps the skin crisp up and is thick enough that you won't have to baste or reapply it. This recipe adds chili sauce, herbs to the mayo, but you can try this with any spice you have on hand. That looks actually really good, you guys. Look at that. I'm gonna have to try that. I actually have chicken thighs sitting out thawing right now. So that might be, that might be something to try. This is actually some good information. Um, sometimes BuzzFeed is usually like hit or miss as far as good articles versus not good articles, but these are actually kind of interesting. Number seven, use it to make breaded chicken breast without having to use flour or egg. Uh, most breaded chicken breasts get a coating of flour, egg, and then breadcrumbs, but this recipe Streamlines things by ditching the eggs and flour and using mayonnaise. The mayo helps the breadcrumbs stick to the chicken, kind of like glue, and gives it a nice golden color. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, I've tried using, which is really good, if you take uh, chicken breasts or chicken thigh and you dip it in ranch dressing and then put breadcrumbs on it. So good. Y'all should try that. You bake it. 350 for like, you know, 40 minutes. Uh, use it to create a creamy cheese spread perfect for melting on top of garlic bread. Wow. Mixing grated cheese with mayonnaise creates a creamy paste that's easy to spread and melts into a saucy texture perfect for topping garlic bread or flatbread. Y'all, this is making me so hungry. Uh, number nine, mix it into lean ground meat to make it super moist and add just enough fat. Oh, this hack is especially helpful when you're working with a lean ground beef or turkey. It helps the meat stay moist and adds just enough fat to give them flavor without becoming overly fatty. Oh, I'm learning all kinds of things to do with mayonnaise. I don't, and I don't really eat a lot of mayonnaise. Do y'all eat mayonnaise? I just, usually when I make like a sandwich, like a ham and cheese sandwich or something, I use ranch dressing or I'll use mustard. Uh, I don't usually use mayonnaise. Uh, number 10, make an easy marinade with mayonnaise. Uh, mayonnaise has both fat and acid in it, two things that make a killer marinade. This recipe adds herbs, garlics, and spices to jazz it up, but feel free to add whatever flavors you want to the mayo. Hmm. Uh, make a super quick Alfredo sauce with it. Okay, so there's a recipe for that. Uh, add it to your scrambled eggs instead of milk or water. In Alton Brown's cookbook, Everyday Cook, he suggests adding a dollop of mayonnaise to your eggs instead of milk or water to keep them moist. And if the man himself swears by it, it must be good. Yikes. Okay. Well, interesting. So we learned we learned a lot today, didn't we? Uh, I don't know. I I like these articles. I think they're they're fun, and you can learn some some cool things. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the kind of stash video. Um, Kind of gave everyone a glimpse of what what I have, kind of. I didn't. That's not all of it, but that's a large majority of it. Um, yes, some of them. You know, like I said, I have I have a couple in drawers. I have a couple laying out. I didn't show you. You know, obviously this one I'm working on in the two cans, which is right next to me. 
Um, I alternate between those two right now. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that and had some interesting, fun facts about food and things we didn't know that were called, you know, something else and got their name changed. So, yeah. Anyway, I hope everybody has an awesome Thursday and a great weekend. And I am planning on doing another um, another whip and chat on Sunday. And yeah, so I will see you guys on Sunday. Stay safe, stay healthy, love and hugs. Bye guys. <laughs>